as some, uh, something that may be useful, an avenue for uh, government, law, all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot of controversy, I think everybody knows, about how many Scientologists there really are. I mean, I'm sure that they include me as a Scientologist and my little son. Because he was, uh, when he was born, David Miscavige gave him a lifetime membership, was one of the gifts he sent him. Um, and I still get mail, so perhaps they consider me still of their number. I'm not sure. But uh, it's, it's an interesting thing. But there's certain ways that you can actually determine or get an idea. One, I was talking to Mark on the plane. He gave me a very good... A barometer that one could use. They released, you know that everybody uses a, an e-meter, elect, electro psychometer to, in Scientology, any good Scientologist is supposed to not only have one, but two e-meters. And when they have a new product, all the old products are outdated and worthless. When they came out with the new e-meter, they made about 30,000 of them. Okay? They still haven't gotten rid of all of them. Now, I don't think every Scientologist bought two, and they certainly, but they also have to give a bunch to the organizations to audit with. Okay? 30,000. The fastest growing religion on the planet? Okay? Here's another indication. A friend of mine was working up lines. It was Headley. I get all my information from Headley. But, uh, <laughs> Guy was up line, it was Headley, and he, he was responsible for putting together um, the events. Every year Scientology puts on these events, L. Ron Hubbard's birthday. It's this big extravaganza where they get to get the public pumped up and, and, and feed them a bunch of misleading information about how well Scientology's doing, including things like we never lose a law case or anything like that. And the statistics are going through the roof. Incidentally, since the golden age of tech, the statistics are crashing, crashing, okay? And that's very, uh, it's amazing. Anyway, no Scientologist should ever know that information. If, if the, because if the statistics are crashing, that means that, that top management is suppressive. In other words, David Miscavige. So they'll never know this, okay? Um, at any rate, um, he told me that they spent $400,000 to promote an event. And they promote, they promote, they promote, and I'm telling you, as a public in Scientology, when there's an event coming, you're coming to the event, you, I mean, it gets like, oh man, there's like two, three weeks where it's like, please, you see a guy's coming up to you, yeah, I'm coming to the event. Just, yeah, okay? So it's like you're really pressured to go to these events. The last event that cost them $400,000 to promote, and they do their own promotion, so it's not like it's expensive for them. That's a lot of promotion when you're paying people 36 cents an hour, okay? And you have all the machines to paint them up your flyers and whatnot. 10,000 people showed up worldwide. 10,000 people. $400 a person they pay. And 10,000 people. Now, it's interesting. When Anonymous had their first protest worldwide, without even any organization at all, they had 10,000 people. Listen, here's the last little point on that thing. It's been tracked and figured out that in the, in the C organization, which is the most elite group, you know, a lot of people get into Scientology, oh, you know, maybe I heard Tom Cruise did it, let me try a course. People who join the C org, you know, I'm talking about the commitment that they make is, is extreme. And it's, a, and it's a particular, as L. Ron Hubbard said, breed of cat that would be the kind of person that's willing to make this kind of a commitment. So they're really serious people. They're signing a one billion year contract. So they are saying, not only will I serve under these conditions to the day I die, when I come back next lifetime and the one after that and the one after that and the one, I will continue to come to help forward the purposes of Scientology. That's a hell of a com commitment. There are 25,000 ex Sea Org members. There are now in the Sea Organization four to eight thousand. It's hard to get the, the number. So that means that the statistic 
for the most hardcore Scientologists is that five out of six leave. Okay? And when you get on these uh, websites like Clambake, or these people who are anonymous, but were actually used to be in the Sea Org, and they've contacted me in private mef messages, and they are scarred and hurt and scared, and they can't stand up and say, yeah, my name is Bill, and I don't believe in Scientology, and here's why. They can't say that. They don't have that luxury. Because, you know, they're afraid they'll never see their daughter. So they have to kind of toe the line. Or they, when, if they route it out of the Sea Org uh, in, a, in the way that the Sea Org permits you to leave for whatever reason, let's say you refuse to have the abortion, you, you have to sign an affidavit saying, and it's filmed. You have to sign an affidavit that every time you say something negative about Scientology, you have to pay $50,000. So these are the things that inhibit these people from speaking up. And I, that's a whole other subject. I mean, that's just wrong. You can't, that's just, that's not right. You can't, that's controlling their mind even after they're out. Okay? So here are these hardcore Scientologists. And I was thinking about something, I don't know, there was a drug that was recently in the news, I don't know if it was here in Europe as well, but there was this drug Vioxx. You wear Vioxx? Okay, so Vioxx was this drug that was supposed to help you with uh, high blood pressure or something like that, and uh, what's it? Against pain? Anyway, so it was giving one people out of a thousand was getting a, a heart attack. And then something like, uh, of the people who got the heart attack, three out of ten were actually having serious heart attacks, some even dying. Okay? So one out of a thousand, and in that, some died. Okay? And, the, and, and these people, you know, were made to pull this off the market. And then it was shown that these people actually probably knew about this data and, and hid it from the public because it was something that was successful for them financially. Now, that's a criminal activity. It's, it's despicable. Now, you look at, I'm not saying, I don't know, there's people who say Scientology kills people, there's circumstantial evidence that it does. But when you have five out of six people leaving, and these are people who are more gung-ho, so for them to leave, something really bad had to happen. And we had to see a couple of examples here. I mean, Larry didn't even tell you the personal reason what, what made him wake up and really go. But it's, it's as bad as Mark's. And it'll make you cry. Okay? And there are 25,000 stories like that. Let's give them a bunch that aren't. But still, the statistics are such that maybe we should pull this thing off the market. You know? And the other thing is, it's like, if not, pull it off the market. Do you know what a black box warning is? This is something Scientology brags about. It's that because they, they're all against these psych drugs because they're dangerous and they lobby Washington and they get and they brag that we got a black box warning on uh, Prozac. So it's like a thing on a, I don't know if they have it in here in the Europe, but like a, if you buy a pack of cigarettes, it says warning, it could be dangerous, it can cause lung cancer. Okay? So maybe Scientology, if they're going to not, 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 not pull it off the market, People should be made aware of the consequences. And that's something that government could possibly affect. <laughs> and that, that is exactly the last thing I was going to say. So thank you for listening. And I'm, thank you. <laughs>